It is now my honor to welcome another very special guest to the rally stage who's going to share her journey and her story with all of you tonight. Please welcome Rally Kid Peyton to the stage. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Peyton Gully. I am 17 years old and a senior at Pope High School, and I am a rally kid. Tonight, I am joined by my mom, dad, and one of my younger sisters, Anna, all of whom I love very much. Thank you all for letting me share my story. I hope it will help you all see the impact and importance that your financial support to Rally has. Since I was young, I have always been competitive and loved school and playing sports. I excelled in and out of the classroom. As a freshman, I made both the varsity cross country and lacrosse teams, and even ranked eighth academically in my class out of 500. But as I started training for lacrosse during my sophomore year, just two years ago, I noticed a strange pain in my legs. I also got a really bad headache that lasted the entire month of December, but I figured it was just from overdoing it in sports and in school. My headache got so bad that my mom and I had to drive through the snow to get to the emergency room at the children's hospital. And after many hours and many tests, a doctor came in and spoke words that my mom and I never thought we would hear. He said, we think Peyton has leukemia. And I thought instantly, this is it. I'm going to die. How do you go from training for lacrosse one day to thinking you might die the next? My family was in shock. We could not comprehend how something like this could be happening. I was admitted to the pediatric ICU, and while my friends were getting to be normal high schoolers, I started intense chemotherapy. There are two types of leukemia, ALL and AML. I was receiving treatment for ALL, the second most common type of childhood cancer, and also the most curable, with a 90% cure rate. This made us feel better, but still, it was cancer, and I was so scared. But I was surrounded by support, love, and prayers from friends, family, rally, and even people I didn't know. I had no doubts that I would be back at school and playing lacrosse again in no time. And then my doctor called. He said that I had traces of AML, the bad leukemia, in my blood. I now had an extremely rare form of cancer called mixed phenotype acute leukemia. Now I had two different cancers at the same time. I just couldn't believe it. I learned I would need a bone marrow transplant and spent a month at the hospital receiving high doses of chemotherapy and radiation to get my immune system to zero in preparation for the transplant. It was awful. I was blessed, though, to find out that my younger sister, Anna, would be my bone marrow donor, which dramatically increased the chances of the transplant working. When you receive your transplant, you are fully awake, and it really doesn't hurt. It was pretty strange, but also pretty cool. But after the transplant, I was so sick and spent four long weeks in the hospital. I was so nauseous that I couldn't eat a single thing for over a month. But after those four miserable weeks, I was thrilled and thankful to have been declared cancer-free. I then spent a month at the Ronald McDonald House in order to be close to the hospital, 
and was finally excited to go home at the beginning of the summer and be with my family. Even though I was cancer free, I still had to do blood draws, bone marrow aspirations, and biopsies to make sure that the cancer had not returned. Finally, I was cleared to go out, and I spent the rest of the summer hanging out with my friends, going to the beach, just trying to feel like a normal teenager again. I was even getting ready to celebrate my 16th birthday and get my driver's license. However, four days before my birthday, my dad got a call from the doctor with the results of my most recent bone marrow biopsy. I walked downstairs to find my parents sitting on the couch, crying. My cancer was back. I had relapsed with ALL. Instead of being a normal teenager about to get my driver's license, I found out I had cancer again. Not so normal after all. Finding out that I had relapsed was 10 times harder than finding out I had cancer the first time. I didn't think I could go through all of this pain again. Kind of like you, Mr. Ed, when you said you would run another marathon. <laughs> Relapsing less than six months post-transplant is not a good sign. And nobody, including the doctors, were looking very optimistic. My chances of beating this disease were looking very slim. But even in such a dark moment, my friends and family helped make me feel so loved. They threw me an amazing Sweet 16 party in a Chick-fil-A, wait for it, on a Sunday. <laughs> Over 100 people came, including Dean and Reed, and it meant the world to me. But that was just a small moment of joy. And unfortunately, cancer is a long and difficult journey. I once again checked into the hospital and was given chemo, steroids, and loads of other medications. This was the worst I had ever felt. I started to have these horrible hallucinations and excruciating stomach pains. No child should ever have to suffer like that. No parent should ever have to watch their child suffer like that. That's why I am so thankful that part of Rally's mission is to find better treatments with fewer side effects. Now, I'm a bit of a science nerd, so I'm going to break down my treatment plan for you. It was twofold. First, I entered a clinical trial called CAR T cell therapy to treat the ALL. The doctor took a bunch of blood cells out of my body and genetically modified them to kill the ALL cancer cells, but not kill the good cells. Pretty cool, right? Now, research isn't glamorous, but it is so important. Rally, for many years, funded CAR T cell therapy research at the Children's Hospital in Philadelphia. Can you believe that I was receiving treatment that Rally funded? What Rally does is so important and they couldn't do it without your support. And believe it or not, I did not have one single side effect from the treatment. I was able to stay at home and do things that I had not done in almost a year, like schoolwork. Now, schoolwork doesn't sound like much fun, but all I wanted was to feel normal, and I did, finally. I had been home for almost three months and was feeling great, but two weeks before Christmas, part two of my treatment plan began. I had to have another bone marrow transplant, just in case there were any sneaky AML cells hiding in my body. I spent the next two months in the hospital, and while kids were enjoying their Christmas at home, I was so sick I had to reopen all of my presents in February. I will spare you most of the details about those two months, but just know I was so sick that I had to get a feeding tube. After two months of staying at the hospital, recovering from my transplant, the doctors decided that the best medicine was to send me straight home. The days at home started out very, very rough, but things slowly got better, 
and by summer, I was hanging out with my friends, driving around, and even eating normal food again. Except for some reason, I don't like chocolate anymore. What's up with that? <laughs> the time had come for my bone marrow biopsy test. Remember the last time I had this test? I learned that my cancer was back. And I was scared out of my mind. The biopsy was on a Wednesday, and I had to wait several days before receiving the test results. That Friday night, Good Friday to be specific, I was at the Passion Concert celebrating Jesus and my faith, but my mind was all over the place because we still had not heard from the doctor. I broke down sobbing and I left the concert early. I called my mom and she told me that the doctor had just called and that I was cancer free. Over the summer, I got to ring the bell at the Children's Hospital to let the world know that I was cancer-free. I was very excited to start school again with my class, and I even ran cross-country again, but this time not varsity. I was now actually the slowest person on the team. Do you feel my pain, Brian McCann? that didn't matter. I finished every single race with more strength and determination than I ever thought I could have. And to my surprise, I was crowned homecoming queen just a few weeks ago. <laughs> and it was for sure one of the most amazing nights of my life. But despite all of these moments of joy, Cancer still took a lot from me. During my cancer journey, I missed three whole semesters of high school and playing the sports that I loved, cross country and lacrosse. I missed my two dogs at home. I missed hanging out with my friends, going to football games, and driving anywhere and everywhere. I missed going to church every Sunday and going on mission trips. And I even missed putting my hair up for prom since I barely had any hair. These two years have definitely been the hardest of my life. And I don't like thinking about this, but there is always going to be a chance that I could have cancer again. I will forever have that weight on my shoulders, no matter how much I try to brush it off. But what's crazy is that there are kids that have been doing this for their whole life. And there are way too many kids who have lost their cancer battle, like my friend Grace. My journey has shaped me into a person that I am proud to be. I believe that this is all just a small piece of God's plan for me. I believe that there is hope ahead and we will find a cure for childhood cancer. But we must fund childhood cancer research. We need research so that kids don't have to be afraid of not having a future. So that kids can dream big, set goals, and achieve them so that kids can just be kids. So I'm asking you to give generously tonight. Funding research is the only chance we have at a future. I'm speaking for kids like myself who are, who are beating cancer, kids like Brecklin who are still fighting cancer, and kids like Grace who have lost their lives to cancer. I know that your generous donations to Rally make a huge difference. Without your generous support, I would not be standing here tonight. I stand before you as living proof that research works. And I agree with Grace that together you and I and researchers, along with God's help, will one day give all kids fighting cancer a long, bright future. Thank you all for being here tonight and rally on. <laughs>